The Biden administration is finalizing plans to send Patriot missiles, its most advanced air defense system, to help Kyiv counter Moscow's relentless missile attacks, which have pounded Ukraine's power grid and other civilian infrastructure. The Russian embassy in Washington says sending the Patriots would, quote, lead to unpredictable consequences. Joining me now from Kyiv to assess where a cold winter of war could lead is Ukraine's Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba. Foreign Minister, welcome back to the program. Can I start by asking you where you think and how soon you think you will get the Patriots and how much of a difference it will make to the war effort? It's not for me to disclose uh, what the final decision of the Biden administration will be. But I can reiterate that we've done a lot in cooperation with our American partners to uh, solve this issue. And particularly the last conversation between our presidents, President Biden and Zelensky, was very patriotic, so to say. Uh, of course, uh, these systems, uh, if provided to Ukraine, they will be a game changer in the protection of Ukrainian cities and civ civilians and civil energy infrastructure. You've obviously no doubt heard that the Russian embassy has said it could lead to unpredictable consequences. The Russian foreign ministry spokesman has said that this would mean bringing, uh, you know, the U.S. more closely into direct involvement in the Ukrainian conflict. Do those words rattle you? No, oh, empty words. We've heard this uh, uh, threatening comments so many times before that, uh, and they never proved to, to be reality. Russia has already crossed all red lines and they do not spare anyone, neither uh, animals, nor nature, nor civilians, nor civilian infrastructure. They destroy everything. So they bear responsibility for the escalation. Of course, they want us to be weak, uh, but uh, and that's why they speak against any delivery of weapons. But uh, this is uh, the reality is different. We will be getting stronger. Uh, so let me ask you about your strength. Uh, this whole fall season, you know, over the last several months, has been marked by a huge amount of, of counteroffensive by your forces and regaining territory. At the same time, Russia has this huge mobilization, and your president and, and generals have been talking about concerns for the future potentially that Russia will regroup, it has a lot more people, and it might be ready for another major offensive sometime early in the new year. Well, that's why we have to be ready for our counteroffensives and uh, our uh, um, uh, efforts to stop the potential Russian offensive. And this is why it is important to continue supplying Ukraine with uh, uh, howitzers, with ammunition to them and with other advanced uh, weapons. This is a war, and of course, uh, both sides have their own plans. The difference between us and Russia is that we are fighting a just war defending ourselves. And uh, therefore, uh, we have full right, unlimited by uh, any law, to receive everything that we need to defeat Russia. And this is what is going to happen eventually. Eventually. So how do you see the battlefield shaping up in 2023, and I also want to ask you whether you see a a difference in 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 tactic, at least if not strategy, um, since President Putin named uh, you know Surovikin as the battlefield commander. I mean, we obviously see the the tactics that they used in Chechnya, in Syria, being used against uh, your country right now, pounding civilians, pounding even places like Kherson, which have, which have been liberated. I mean, just trying to 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 break your spirit, break the spirit of the people, and turn the country into rubble? Yes, the appointment of the new commander on the Russian side made the war even more ruthless, not only with regard to Ukrainians, whom the Russians are fighting, but also with regard to the Russian soldiers themselves. We see that uh, uh, Russian men thrown into the battle are used by their generals as a cannon fodder and they have uh, no mercy towards them whatsoever. Uh, our strategy is very simple. To prevent Russian offensive, you have to keep them busy 
with countering our offensive, our liberating offensive. And uh, we should not allow Russia to dictate the situation on the battlefield. And to do that, we need uh, more heavy weapons, as I said. Uh, Hovitzers, tanks, uh, a lot of ammunition, uh, multiple launch rocket systems. We should change the optics, uh, help Ukraine not to defend itself, help Ukraine to liberate its territories and to win this war. The sooner it ends with Ukraine's victory, the better it will be for all. So to that end, you, you've obviously heard and we've all reported on these you know, the sort of raising of the view that there might be some kind of negotiation possible or pressured, uh, and, 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 you know, clearly that your side has said that we're not ready yet to do that. But President Zelensky called for Russian forces to start withdrawing, you know, by this Christmas. They have said that that's a non-starter, and they're only uh, talking if... President Zelensky agrees to their maximalist demands, which are to accept all the, um, you know, the, the so occupied territory. Where, in your mind, does any, is there any space at the moment for any kind of negotiation? President Zelensky proposed a very reasonable peace formula that consists of 10 elements and uh, negotiations and fixing the end of the war on the paper is step 10, not step one. Uh, the, the, this process of ending the war should begin with the withdrawal of Russian forces, and there are many other issues that need to be addressed uh, in, this, in this context. So no one should be buying the Russian smokescreen operation when they uh, talk about their openness to negotiations uh, with, with one hand, and push uh, the button, sending more missiles, more Iranian drones, and more Russian troops against uh, Ukraine with the other hand. Uh, for Russia, as I said, talks is just a smokescreen. We do not see any single indicator that they're serious about them. Mm -hmm. and, and just lastly and briefly, obviously, we're watching the attacks on your energy system. We know people are living in freezing conditions. UNICEF has said potentially one and a half million children could suffer depression, anxiety and other conditions, as well as many are feared, you know, to, to be at, at mortal risk this winter. Do you think you have the situation under control to survive the winter? Well, you know, every time there is an air raid siren in Kiev, the first thing I do is calling my children to help them to cope with anxiety, with anxiety and fear uh, about, about another Russian attack. And every time it's over, I speak with them again and we discuss it. So I, I help them to cope with it. So I perfectly know what, what you're talking about. But uh, yes, we know that we are facing a ruthless enemy who is destroying everything, trying to break us down. But this, the mood in, in Ukraine is, even in the most difficult places, is the same. He is not, Putin is not going to break us down. Mm. Whatever it takes, it doesn't matter how difficult it will be, we will survive, and we will survive this winter against all odds. This is the mood, both outside of Kyiv, outside of the building, uh, on the streets of Kyiv, and also on the front line.